Today, we're gonna talk about how to stop self-sabotaging your weight loss goals. Now, I know these chicken nuggets smell good, they look good, and maybe you made them for the kids and they don't end up eating them, so you see that as wasted food and you start to eat them. But I'm like you, and I know that you're tired of self-sabotaging your fitness and weight loss goals, so it's time to break free from these patterns and achieve the healthy lifestyle that you deserve. So today, I want you to follow these strategies to overcoming self-sabotage and to find success in your personal fitness journey. Now, before I go on, I want you guys to put into the comments, what is that one food that you know is not good for you, but you always go back and eat it? Put that into the comment section. To help us stop self-sabotaging, we first have to become aware of what the behaviors that we're doing and we need to take action to counteract them. For example, if you tend to procrastinate on your workouts and you don't go, then try scheduling them at a time each day and treat them like a non-negotiable appointment. We all know that you would never miss your kid's dentist appointment or you wouldn't miss your nail appointment. So the workouts need to be exactly like that. They need to be non-negotiable. Have you noticed any self-sabotaging behaviors that hinder your fitness progress? Are there reoccurring patterns of procrastination or do you have negative self-talk that's holding you back? So talking about negative thoughts, we need to challenge them. Now, instead of always saying something negative to yourself, maybe you should start replacing them with something positive. So instead of saying that you're tired, start saying that you're awake. Instead of saying that you can't, start saying, I'll try. You need to start practicing self-compassion and focus on progress, focus on your wins, rather than fixating on setbacks or losses. Now, what about self-discipline? Do you have the self-discipline to stick to a fitness routine? Now, maybe having an accountability partner or seeking a coach to help you enhance your commitment can help. But what we need to do is cultivate self-discipline and we need to create accountability. So boost your self-discipline by creating a routine and sticking to it. Again, make it a non-negotiable. Set reminders throughout the day Use fitness apps or trackers or find an accountability buddy who can help you stay on track and provide support during challenging times. Or hire a great coach to give you that kick in the ass that you need when you're trying to fall off, right? We all know that we can stay focused. We've already done this in the past. Sometimes we just need that kick in the ass to get ourselves back in a line. And here's the most important thing coming from a coach. If you hire a coach and you dedicate yourself to them, you need to finish what you started no matter what. You've done way harder things in your life. Stop giving yourself so many passes. Stop feeling sorry for yourself and start listening to your coach because if you continue to listen to yourself with the negative self-talk and you keep giving yourself free passes and you have no accountability, guess where you're gonna end up? Yo-yoing, back and forth, up and down, and it's gonna create no happiness. Right now, today is the day to change the pattern. It's time to walk that straight line and it's time to get success once and for all. Now, what about the people that are around you? Who in your life can provide support and encouragement on your fitness and weight loss journey? And you gotta ask yourself, are there any negative influences that you should distance yourself, even if it's just for a short period of time? You know how you have that group of friends that every weekend they go through the same thing. They wanna go out, they wanna party, and they wanna engage in habits that you're trying to change. So maybe one weekend you actually take a break. <laughs> Give them any excuse. Here's one of the best excuses I use when I don't wanna drink. Somebody offers me a shot, they give me a hard time. You know what I say to them? I'm on meds. As soon as I say I'm on meds, for some reason, these guys, oh, okay, no, no problem, no, no drinks for you. Because these guys are on meds and they understand the importance of these meds. And so to me, I'm like, man, this is the easiest way out. So for you, it's okay to go out with these people. It's okay to be friends with these people, but maybe you need to limit yourself. So one of the things, if you're a person that goes out and you're very sociable, when you do go out, maybe you leave before the drinking or the partying or the food gets out of hand, okay? You are gonna be that friend that's going to pattern disrupt. And if they can't accept you for the pattern disruption that you are, meaning that you're trying to self-improve yourself, then you're gonna find yourself out of that friendship circle, but don't worry, you're young enough, you're popular enough that you're going to replace those bad habits with good habits. But it's going to take time and consistency and setting yourself up and positioning yourself in a place of success. Remember, 
the key to overcoming self-sabotage, that it takes time and it's going to take effort. This is probably going to be one of the hardest things that you do because we are what we repeatedly do and we get such into a rhythm of doing the same things over and over and over again that it gets so hard to get out of it. But I'm going to tell you this, and I've seen it through the 15 to 20 years of whatever it is that I've been coaching, that even if you take one small step out of your comfort zone, that even that small step is going to give you that self-actualization that anything is possible. So whether that means that you don't sleep in on a Monday and you come to the gym, or whether that means that you take one weekend off from drinking wine or drinking with your friends, or whether that means that you go to a party and you don't drink or engage in the charcuterie board. Or what about a weekend where you actually work out? So instead of just working out Monday to Friday and you're telling yourself that I don't work out on weekends, maybe there's that one weekend where you actually go and work out. Remember, it's all about the 1%. So you gotta ask yourself, what is the 1% difference? What is the one small thing today that you can change that you know is going to break that cycle of self-sabotage? So guys, give the video a like, put in the comments your 1% commitment. What is it the 1%? What is the one small thing that you're going to commit to for at least seven days that you know is gonna create a spiral effect into a bunch of positive things?